Making an archaeological discovery is like finding the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Even when you have an interesting or important piece, you still have to find the other pieces in order to make sense of the whole picture. We've got some wonderful archaeological puzzle pieces for you in this video, along with some striking finds from the field of paleontology, just for good measure. Ten-year-old Shang Yang She of Heihuan, China, is very interested in science. Like many boys his age, he's absolutely fascinated by dinosaurs. His knowledge of the extinct giant lizards is what drew him to this discovery when he and his friends were out playing by the Dong River. Zhang's friends thought he'd picked up a strange stone, but Zhang was already pretty sure he'd found a dinosaur egg. And he was right! After combing the area, he eventually found 11 fossilized dinosaur eggs, all of which are roughly 66 million years old. That dates them to the late Cretaceous period, not long before the entire species was wiped out by a global catastrophe. This might sound like a fortuitous discovery, but there's something special about Heihuan when it comes to dinosaur finds. It's been given the nickname China's Home of Dinosaurs because more than 17,000 dino eggs have been found here since the first recorded discovery in 1996. Zhang's egg cluster is now in the hands of the Heihuan Dinosaur Museum, where the eggs will be cleaned up before being put on display. A henge is a prehistoric monument characterized by a circular bank or a ditch, usually topped with a wooden or stone circle. The most famous henge in England is Stonehenge, but the most unusual grouping of the ancient monuments is the Thornborough henges. There are no stone circles here, which might be why the site is less famous than Stonehenge, but they represent a remarkable astronomical achievement. The three circular banks of the Thornborough henges align perfectly with the stars that make up Orion's belt in the night sky. Aside from being precisely aligned and geometrically identical, they're also very big. Each of the three henges comes with a nine-foot high bank, a nine-foot deep ditch, and a 750-foot diameter. The ancient builders of these monuments finished their work by topping the banks with gypsum, which makes the banks sparkle and shine when the sun catches them. Archaeologists don't know for sure how old they are, but most experts agree they were made at least 5,000 years ago. What we don't know is why they were made, or what they were used for. Perhaps we never will. For hundreds of years, archaeologists have believed that the White Monument of Tel Banat in Syria is a large burial mound. In early 2021, a new theory was proposed. Rather than being a simple burial mound, it's been argued that this is actually the world's oldest war memorial. That's thanks to a new analysis of the human remains inside the mound, which has proven that rather than housing the remains of the settlement's enemies, the White Monument is where local warriors were laid to rest. Several ancient Mesopotamian texts refer to war memorials of this kind, but none have ever officially been found. Now, it turns out that this 4,300-year-old example might have been hiding in plain sight this whole time. Perhaps this conclusion could, and should, have been reached far earlier. The soldiers buried within the White Monument have been laid to rest in their chariots with grave goods. That's a greater level of respect than you'd expect an ancient culture to give to their enemies. While the monument might look like a dirty hill now, it's thought that it was once a stepped pyramid similar to the famous Pyramid of Saqqara. Sadly, time and the elements haven't been kind to its external walls. Nobody knows what's hiding in the archives of the National Library of Australia. Not even the people who run it! The contents of the archive are so enormous that its current managers rely on students and researchers to come in and help them to catalog it all. It was during one such cataloging missions in December 2020 that the 120-year-old chocolates of an Australian poet were found hiding on a shelf. The chocolates are still inside their original tin, and the tin helps us to date them. It bears a picture of Queen Victoria of England and a message of seasonal goodwill. After doing a little digging, 
Researchers were able to confirm that tins of chocolates like this were sent to British soldiers serving on the front line of the Boer War in 1900 as a way of boosting morale. The paperwork accompanying the tin says that it was gifted to the museum by the Australian bush poet Andrew Barton Banjo Patterson. That's a little confusing because the poet didn't fight in the war. He was presumably gifted the box by someone who did, or obtained it through trade. The fact that chocolates are still wrapped in tinfoil means that they're theoretically still fine to eat, but we are not sure we'd recommend it. What did the Vikings keep inside their toolboxes? Well, here's a discovery that might be able to tell us. It's a 1,000-year-old toolbox containing 14 iron tools, and it was found during archaeological excavations at the Viking Ring Fortress of Borgring in Denmark in 2016. Prior to this discovery, historians weren't sure whether Borgring had any permanent residence, or whether it was used as a purely ceremonial space. The toolbox is the first direct evidence that suggests anyone lived there full-time. We keep saying the word toolbox, but the actual box was made of wood and rotted away centuries ago. Over time, it was replaced with soil, and the soil held the tools in place. It's surprising that they were left in the box at all, as the Vikings usually melted down unwanted or unused pieces of metal so they could be recycled. A few of the tools can be identified as spoon drills and draw plates, and may have been used to produce wire bracelets of the kind that we know Vikings used to wear. There's also an object that might be akin to a modern pair of pliers or tweezers. Unfortunately, the rest of the tools in the collection cannot be identified. Back when Israel was known as Judea, the land was occupied and controlled by the Romans. Their presence wasn't always welcomed, though, and several notable Jewish uprisings happened during times of Roman control. Two of those ancient events are commemorated by these coins, which were minted 70 years apart by ancient Jewish rebels. Both were found in the West Bank of Jerusalem in July 2021. The first of the coins, minted in the year 67, is imprinted with the image of a vine leaf and a message written in Hebrew that translates as Free Zion. An inscription on the other side of the coin reads Year 2, perhaps indicating how long the rebellion has gone on for. It comes from a time when Jewish rebels had driven Roman forces out of much of the region and formed a government. This coin was minted by that government. Three years later, the Romans took Jerusalem back, destroying most of the Temple Mount in the process. The second coin, dated to the year 134, comes from the time of the Bar Kokhba Rebellion and also comes with an inscription that says, Free Jerusalem. The name Shimon on the reverse of the coin is probably a reference to Jewish rebel leader Shimon Bar Kokhba. This rebellion was also successful in retaking Jerusalem, but lost the city again in the year 136. The Gandhara scrolls are some of the most important relics of early Buddhism in the world. It's always a big deal when one is either discovered or made public for the first time. And so that proved to be the case yet again when the Library of Congress in the United States of America made a 2,000-year-old Gandhara scroll public in digital form in July 2019. Only a few hundred manuscripts like this one are known to exist each one with something new to tell us about the early history of Buddhist literature. They're called Kandara scrolls because they were all created in Gandhara, a Buddhist region between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Legend has it that each of them was dictated to scribes by Siddhartha Gautama himself, also known as Shakyamuni Buddha. They tell the tales of the 13 Buddhas who came before him, including their social class, their teachings, and their years of birth and death. The one revealed by the Library of Congress is about 80% complete and is one of the very oldest known to have survived to the present day. It's too delicate to ever be placed on public display, but being able to see it in digital form is better than not being able to see it at all. In June 2022, a fascinating collection of artifacts was found in Herne Bay, Kent, England, as part of the most extensive archaeological dig that's ever been performed in the area. 
Head archaeologist Richard Greatorex is particularly fond of a medieval whistle from the beginning of the 11th century, which suggests that people may have lived in Hearn Bay and farmed the land 1,000 years ago. However, that's not the oldest of the artifacts found during the dig. Some of the implements and objects retrieved are thought to be far older, going back a full 3,000 years to the Bronze Age. As well as the objects, the experts found grain stores from the Iron Age. They appear to have been raised above the ground, which was probably an attempt at keeping rats and mice from breaking into them and stealing their contents. It seems that people set up farming communities here, moved away, and then came back again for thousands of years, each time bringing new technologies and new ideas with them. Nobody farms there now, but perhaps it's time to give it another try. A discovery of an older and altogether more violent kind was found in the Black Sea province of Trabzon, Turkey in January 2021. It's a pair of spearheads, both of which are believed to be 6,000 years old. Bizarrely, the first of the spearheads were found at the site of a tunnel construction project in the Ordahisar district. When photographs of the discovery were published online, the owner of a second-hand shop in the city center got in touch to say they had one just like it. They'd been trying to sell it for months in complete ignorance of the fact that they were dealing with a precious 6,000-year-old artifact. The spearheads are so old that they might push back the date that the city of Trabzon is thought to have been established, although it should be noted that the presence of spears doesn't prove that anybody lived here all that time ago. It merely suggests that there were hunting grounds in the area. Whether they change the history of the city or not, the spearheads are now on display in the Ipeculu Museum. Speaking of things that are 6,000 years old, somebody threw away a collection of tools by the Muir of Ord in the Highlands of Scotland 6,000 years ago, and will probably never know why. The discarded tools include a harpoon, a spear, and some axes. All of the artifacts are made of red deer antlers. Based on the era and the location of the discovery, it's likely that the harpoon, which is really more of a spear, would have been used to hunt seals and wildfowl in the Bewley Firth. It's possible that the tools were left behind when the hunter-gatherers who used them moved away from the area due to rising sea levels. The harpoons aren't without parallel in terms of Scottish discoveries from the Mesolithic era, but the antler axes, which are known as T-axes on account of their shape, are exceptionally rare. Also at the same site, archaeologists found a shell midden, which is like a trash bin used by the hunter-gatherers to discard their uneaten shellfish. There's been a succession of Mesolithic discoveries in this part of Scotland in recent years, including a collection of 8,000-year-old hazelnut shells in Staffan Bay that are thought to have been discarded by another group of hunter-gatherers after snacking on them. The ancient city of Uruk in Iraq has given us countless ancient treasures over the years, but perhaps none so important or so puzzling as the Uruk Trough. It's an important ancient Sumerian work of sculpture, with an age of between 5,000 and 5,300 years old. Of the few surviving works of narrative relief sculpture from the Middle East, this and the Uruk vase are thought to be the oldest. Archaeologists over the years have found much older examples of basic relief sculpture, some of which might be as old as 12,000 years. But the style of the reliefs on the side of the Uruk trough is far more advanced than anything of that age. Experts can't say for sure what the Uruk trough was used for, but their best guess is that it was a cult image installed inside the temple of the goddess Inanna. However, that doesn't explain the presence of a procession of sheep in one of the scenes on the object's surface. The circumstances of the discovery of the trough are unknown, but the British Museum managed to purchase it in 1928, just before the German Oriental Society arrived at the site to take it away. It's been with the British Museum ever since. Sure, you've seen a typewriter before, but have you ever seen a music typewriter? We suspect that you probably haven't, and that's quite a surprise. It's an invention that's been forgotten very quickly. 
Music typewriters were briefly popular in the mid-20th century, but were considered obsolete by the 1960s. And today, there are very few surviving examples left in the world. The first music typewriter was the Keaton Music Typewriter, which was patented in 1936. It's exactly what it sounds like. It works like a regular typewriter, but instead of typing out letters or numbers, it types out musical notation. The extortionate price of the music typewriter might have been at least partially responsible for its failure. A brand new one would cost you $255 in the 1950s, which is equivalent to around $2,400 today. If you or your family happen to have one hanging around in the attic, though, the money spent on it all that time ago would be a worthwhile investment. A Keaton Music Typewriter in full working order would today be expected to fetch a price of at least $12,000, and possibly even more than that. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.